Let me tell you what Elon Musk is actually saying here. When Elon Musk is saying the internal combustion engines are dead, what he's really saying is that, guys, if I ever get to two to three million cars per year, I'm gonna put all of these 15 other guys out of business. My name is Tom Nash, and I quit my job as a senior financial analyst to chase down and expose fake gurus for you. With my background as an MBA in finance and marketing, and over a decade of experience of dissecting and analyzing companies, no fake guru can bullshit me. <laughs> Quick disclaimer before we start this video. I'm one third awake, one third asleep, and one third a unicorn. <laughs> Yesterday, you guys killed it. Battery day was awesome. You guys turned up. We watched this together on the live stream. However, it ended at 3 a.m. my time, which means I'm half asleep, half a unicorn, and half awake. I can't even do math at this point. It's 1.5. Jesus. Am I Trevor Milton? Speaking of Trevor Milton, well, Trevor Milton is out Elon in Elon all the way to prison, Elon Musk just gave the nerdiest talk ever, highly technical, and still managed to kill it. Now, I know most of you hated the way he presented it because it wasn't as exciting. I mean, he wasn't throwing rocks at Cybertrucks. However, there were some real golden nuggets in that presentation. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly what's going on and what are the things that you should be paying attention to. And again, it's coming from a guy who's not a Tesla fanboy. And even though I'll admit Elon Musk looked bored about 66% of the time, it was still a great presentation. Elon and Drew gave out a lot of interesting information, which I want to explain and clarify to you guys to make it simpler and kind of amusing so we can have some fun and learn a few things. So let's get started. Now, before we move on, I have to give out a yellow card to Elon Musk. You European folks, you know what I'm talking about. Now, Elon Musk managed to put his carbon footprint up his ass by saying some nonsense about call usage. Now, here's the thing. Elon Musk basically was trying to make a point. Point being that the world is trending towards less pollutant energy producing materials. And as an example, he gave out, look, coal is being used less and less. And he was talking about solar panels being used more and more. However, that's a very, very strange argument. I feel it's a little bit manipulative. Here's why. Coal usage is on the decline because there are other stuff that burn cheaper and create more energy, such as natural gas. And solar panels are nowhere near, even if the trend is positive, to replace the way we make energy now. There might be an argument about nuclear power plants, and even though solar panels may not be the solution, some of you may say, okay, so maybe he's referring to nuclear energy. So nuclear energy isn't clean, folks. Let me just explain something to you. It's dangerous. As we Russians know it, in 1986, we had one of the worst accidents of all time. About 500,000 people were directly affected by that. Don't be fooled by the official numbers. But beyond it being volatile and dangerous, it's actually very polluting. Nuclear energy generates a lot of nuclear waste, which we literally have nowhere to put but to bury it in the ground and pollute our planet. That's one of the most horrible things that you can think of. Beyond the fact that it's all pretty much an academic discussion because we're running out of the stuff we need to create nuclear energy. There's a specific type of material we need to be dug up from the ground, which is pretty much running out. So nuclear energy has no future, no matter how you look at it, whether you have an ideal kind of position towards it or a practical one. So I definitely call bullshit on Elon Musk's argument about coal usage being down, solar panels being up. This is grade A bullshit. We still need to find a sustainable, clean source of energy, which we currently don't have. However, and here's where I'm going to come to Elon's defense. Even if we pollute our planet while creating energy, if we can get the pollutants out of the cities and into the outskirts, into the wilderness, then we're solving a huge problem, a lot less diseases, a lot less medical issues. So that alone is a sustainable enough cause to create more electric vehicles. However, we're still very far away from finding a sustainable, clean energy source. And don't be fooled by Elon going all out on solar panels. That's not the answer. But I'm sure in the next 20 years, something will come up. Now, moving on to the good stuff. There's been a lot of good stuff in this presentation, and I'm just going to start with one simple thing. Elon Musk pretty much trolled himself in this presentation, and I like the way he did it. Pretty much he said one thing. Listen, guys, at some point, all the other car manufacturers, they're going to catch up. All of them will have electric vehicles. They're going to pretty much run the same. All of them will have autonomy driving. 
So there's not going to be a huge difference in the technical aspects of these vehicles. Pretty much he's going to say that the innovation part of Tesla being way ahead of the curve is going to run out. It's pretty much Elon's way of saying beauty fades, but personality stays. And Elon's way of talking about personality is actually production efficiency. Elon is saying in this presentation, if you listen to it, is basically, listen, we're not always going to be the most innovative company, but we're definitely going to be the most efficient company. And that is actually accurate, not because it's a good prediction, because it's already happening right now. And that's the huge troll. And that is a huge troll because right now in 2020, Elon Musk and Tesla are already the most efficient car manufacturer in the world by miles, by galaxies. And obviously I have data to back up what I'm saying. I went through the top 15 car manufacturers financial statements. So as you can see here, we're talking about the top 15 car manufacturers by volume in the world. What this percentage is, is the profit margin of these companies, the operating profit margin of these companies for the first half of 2020. Now, let me explain something to you. As you can see here, Tesla made the least amount of cars on this list. In 2020, they're expected to deliver about 500,000 cars. Even if this number is 600 or 700, even if this number is a million, they're still gonna be the smallest car producer out of this list. So they're nowhere near all of these other car manufacturers. However, allow me to flip the script. Let's sort this table by profit margin, by operating profit margin, which is pretty much efficiency. The smallest car manufacturer by miles is the fifth most efficient car manufacturer of them all. Its operating profit margin is the fifth best in the world with only 500,000 cars made. When you go up against Toyota, which makes over 10 million cars globally. You have to understand that your possibility to be efficient is nearly non-existent. For example, every dollar you put into research and development spreads around 500,000 cars. Toyota gets to spread it over 10 million cars, which is literally 20 times more than you do. Essentially, that means that Toyota pays 20 times less than Tesla for R&D they get to spread their costs over a large number of units. The scale, the economy of scale here is huge. The automotive industry, much like the aircraft industry, is very dependent on the amount of units being produced. The more units you're producing, the easier it gets to be more efficient and more profitable, especially when you're putting in a lot of resources into R&D, which Tesla definitely does. So can you explain to me how Tesla managed to put in so much money into R&D over only 500,000 cars, pretty much have the most innovative technology at only 500,000 cars. That is pretty much the equivalent of a track meet where one guy has to run with his hands tied down behind his back, running reverse and still beating the competition. Tesla will deliver about 500,000 cars in 2020. And yet they're the fifth most efficient as far as profit margin. And they're making the best cars. So how can it be? The only explanation is efficiency. The only way you can get to that point with only 500,000 cars is by being the most efficient company. That's the huge troll. Elon is saying innovation is fleeting. At some point, everybody's gonna be at the same level. However, we're gonna be the most efficient as far as production, as far as manufacturing. And it may sound like he's talking about the future, but actually he's talking about current times. All of these other car manufacturers are getting their ass kicked by Tesla. Let me tell you what Elon Musk is actually saying here. When Elon Musk is saying the internal combustion engines are dead, what he's really saying is that, guys, if I ever get to two to three million cars per year, I'm going to put all of these 15 other guys out of business. And that kind of segues me to the next point, which is huge. Elon Musk is saying that his target is a $25,000 car, which is an electric self-driving car at 25k let me show you what you can buy for twenty-five thousand dollars right now in the united states now here's the thing elon is going for the holy grail of the automotive industry with twenty-five thousand dollars he's going dead center for that category that's the best category if elon musk can muster up a twenty-five thousand dollar tesla meaning a self-driving electric car at twenty-five thousand dollars he's literally going to put all of these guys out of business regardless of how efficient his manufacturing is so that's like the death blow. Not only he's already the most efficient one, not only that he's gonna be more efficient, he's going for that category who's gonna pretty much kill off his competition because that's the only place they're not competing right now. And they're kicking ass. 
In this category, with the scale of cars, it's going to be much easier for him to do what he does best. That's his wheelhouse, literally. These cars are being made in the gazillions. If he can get in this market with his R&D investment, with his efficiency, it's going to be GG for all the other car manufacturers. And that's the huge news from the convention that I got. And although the presentation was very technical, it was somewhat boring, even Elon Musk kind of looked bored for the most part, it was their best presentation to date. Because even though he wasn't throwing rocks at cars, he basically went after everybody here. He went after his suppliers saying, hey guys, you need to really improve your battery pricing, otherwise I'm going to do it myself. Hey, I already did. Then he went after the medium market, $25,000 per car, pretty much going after the big manufacturers. And at the end, he also went for the high-end market, which they're not competing at right now. Model S Played is a production car that goes 0 to 60 for 2 seconds. That is mind-blowing. At $140,000, that's a supercar for a very affordable price, especially if you're an Arab sheik or some oligarch or Putin. By the way, Putin, I want to ride in this car when you get it. I mean, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a car person. I'm just a guy with a 25-inch forearm. I'm joking. <laughs> but even I can see that the specs of the Model S plate is much better than Lucid. So him going after Lucid in this presentation in a mild manner was actually a death blow to Lucid in my opinion. Because this Model S, if it exists at this price, I mean, Lucid really don't stand a chance. And of course, we had this article from Forbes on the day of the presentation. How coincidental. Jesus Christ, Forbes, would you knock it off? How can we not have this presentation without mainstream media trying to fuck everything up? We have Forbes on the day of the presentation. How surprising. What a coincidence. Coming out with this article. Pretty much saying, hey, Nikola's implosion raises a lot of questions about Tesla. No, it doesn't. You must be high. Ellen R. Wald, what have you been smoking for 20? Shout out Elon Musk. It literally raises zero questions about Tesla. The implosions of Nikola has nothing to do with Tesla. It's completely separate stories. You're talking about the dude who made shit up, produced nothing, couldn't even set up a factory, is alleged to be a creep, versus a guy who did nothing but deliver, who has proven technology, who has sales, who's more efficient than every other car manufacturer right now in the world. Are you high? What's wrong with you? Another example of mainstream media going after Tesla for no reason. You should knock it off, guys. And let me explain something about the battery. And I'm not going to go into this because I'm not a technical guy. There's better channels to talk about the battery. One quick clarification. Elon Musk wasn't talking about some fantasy concept battery they may make. No, he was talking about a battery that exists today. That is currently in existence. That already developed. His only concern is how fast can they get it into the market? Because they have to mass produce it, test it, make sure it's safe. So his estimation was two to three years, which is fair. They may do it faster. In fact, I think they'll do it faster. It's not about some future thing that may or may not happen. Get it right, mainstream media. And before we sign out, listen, if you're a long-term investor in Tesla, shares have dropped 5%. That is insane. If you believe in Tesla as a car company, forget all the energy stuff. 5% drop at this price rate based on what they're about to do in the next five years, that's a must buy. I'm not going to buy it because I'm not a Tesla investor, but I think if you believe in the company, if you think that what they're doing is interesting at this price rate, definitely get it. I think within 24 months, that share is going to be $800 to $900 after the split. By the way, quick shout out to our channel members, our Patreons. You guys make it possible. Thank you for showing up yesterday for the stream. I love you guys. See you guys in the next video.